Hi Flyers, this is Rev D. I want to welcome you back to another remote worship service, our virtual worship. Uh, I am grateful that you are joining us here in this uh, virtual worship space. Uh, so grateful for each and every one of you. I hope that you've had an amazing week and I hope that you are looking forward to another amazing week in spite of all that we have going on around us. Uh, today's sermon will come from Joshua, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17. It is All Saints Sunday. Uh, for those who may not be familiar, All Saints Sunday is an opportunity for us to pause and remember uh, those uh, family members, those loved ones who have transitioned on and are now on the other side of eternity. And so today we pause to remember and celebrate their life and legacy. So thank you for joining in. Take a look at Joshua 3, verses 13 through 17 as we prepare to go deeper into worship. And I invite you now in this moment to prepare your hearts and minds as we listen to some beautiful music. Before we do that, let's just take a moment and pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to worship you, although we're remote, we are grateful to be still connected in community. We ask that you would allow your spirit to be felt. Uh, go and meet everyone where they are. To meet them, that this service will be all that they need for the days, the weeks, and the months to come. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen, amen. That was beautiful music. I am so grateful, uh, so grateful. I know I keep saying that word, but I really am grateful. That's the only thing that I can use to describe it. So we're uh, thankful for that music sent in by our undergraduate minister of music, Angelo. Uh, thank you, Angelo, for preparing us uh, to go deeper into worship through those selections. Well, it is time to uh, hear from God through scripture, uh, through our sermonic uh, moment. And so um, I'll ask you to uh, ready yourselves as we uh, prepare um, to go deeper. So Joshua, the third chapter, uh, verses 13 through 17. I hope that you have read those, um, played for you earlier. Um, and we're just going to jump right into it. So today's message is titled Crossing over crossing over when i first looked at this particular text it was difficult uh, for me to grasp i named that it was difficult because this year has been challenging to say the least it has been challenging to see friends and loved ones transition and make their journey to the other side uh, just last month I had to watch uh, as two of my loved ones made their transition, uh, both my grandmother and my first cousin. And so this text is particularly uh, difficult to grasp, but there is richness if we hold on and look uh, beyond the surface. And so today I want to just spend a couple of times of talking about what we can glean from the ancestors, what we can glean from the elders, what we can glean from those who have gone before us. Maybe you're familiar with the story of the children of Israel. If not, let me give you a quick uh, rundown of what happened here at the Spark Notes. So the children of Israel were uh, in captivity in Egypt. They were under the control of Pharaoh. Uh, and through Moses, the one who helped to deliver them out, they found themselves freed from Egyptian control. Um, maybe you haven't heard this, but maybe you have. They uh, found themselves at one point encountering a Red Sea with Pharaoh's army behind them. Pharaoh was upset that they had escaped and wanted to pull them back into captivity, into slavery. And in this moment, God intervenes and uh, opens up the Red Sea and allows them to walk through. They continue journeying through the wilderness with Moses and they do some griping and complaining along the way because they have been traveling for years and years and years. Time after time, they gripe and complain. They do things to really get on God's nerves, but God still continues to show up on behalf of the Israelite people. Well, finally, after uh, some decades, actually, of traveling in the wilderness, they find themselves about to enter into what has been called the promised land for them. So it is really the culmination of years worth of work and dedication and time that is about to come to fruition. But before they can go into the promised land, they end up camping outside of the, uh, the, the land that they will occupy. They camp outside in, in, uh, for three days and Moses has a conversation with God. God instructs Moses to tell the elders and the priests to prepare to walk into the promised land. That preparation that they're going to go through is going to require that the elders and the priest will take the Ark of the Covenant and lead forward with the Ark of the Covenant in their hands. Now, this Ark of the Covenant is a, a, a box of sorts, and in this box, it contains the covenant that was made between God and God's people. It, it, it contains, uh, some say the Ten Commandments are inside of this Ark of the Covenant. It is a very sacred and holy thing. They're about to go into the land, but God gives uh, very specific instructions that the ones who are to lead will be the elders. And what the elders are supposed to do is to carry the Ark of the Covenant, and then they are to dip down their foot in the Jordan River. And when that happened, God says that the river will become dry, given an opportunity, a chance 
for the people to walk over on dry ground. Now, this is important to note because in this time, it was an overflow. It had been flooded. And so the Jordan River had a depth of probably about 17 feet or so. And so uh, under normal circumstances, they may have been able to just uh, get across the river. Um, but in this moment, they're, they're not able to, to just walk across. And so it is the responsibility of the elders and the priest to step in the water so that the ground could become dry and the people can walk over. As I thought about this text, I thought there are some things that we can learn as a generation uh, that, 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 that we can learn to help us deal with the elders that come before us. I want to talk to you all about a couple of those things and then um, I'll let you go. So what I've noticed a lot of times is that there is some difficulty, there can be some difficulty when it comes to people in my generation, in your generation, dealing with the older folks who come before us. There's some difficulty. It seems a lot of times all that the older generation wants to do is to tell young people what to do. So there's some difficulty there. There's some difficulty because sometimes uh, those who are viewed as our elders also feel uh, that their job is to, uh, to, to make us be many versions of them. I don't know, maybe you dealt with your grandparents or even your parents and it seems that they continue to try to control how you live and what you do and how you do it. They don't quite understand how you live and the culture that we're currently living in. And sometimes the propensity, we have the, 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 the thought, the moments, we feel like um, just saying forget about them, right? We just want to move forward and do our own things. But actually, there are a lot of things that we can learn from our elders if we just take a moment and think about it. Here in this text, the elders are instructed to go before the people and to stand on dry ground, to stand in the middle of the Jordan River so that the ground can become dry and the people can cross over. The beautiful thing here is that they were set to lead, but when it came to entering into the promised land, their job was not to lead anymore. Their job was simply to step into the water and to stand and take watch. Stepping in the water really is a dangerous thing to do if you think about it. We're talking about water that is extremely deep. The possibility of drowning is real. And yet the elders, the priests, are called to step into the water and stand there until everyone crosses over. That is important because what it teaches us, what we can learn from our elders is that there are moments that require extreme faith, extreme boldness, and we are called like our elders did in this text. We are called to step into dangerous waters even when we don't quite understand why we're being asked to do so. Not only are we called to step into dangerous waters, but there are moments where we are called to stand by and take notice of what is happening. That was the second things, thing that the elders were asked to do, to step in the water and then to stand and watch as the people go by. Sometimes our, our, our desire is to jump and do everything and to be everywhere and to try to show up and, and show how strong and how powerful we are and, and to grind, right? Grind culture is a really big thing, but sometimes we are actually called to stand by, not to work, not to try to control the situation, not to try to make things happen, but just to stand by. That was their instruction. Step in the water, a dangerous situation. Step in the water and then stand and watch. In a moment of pandemic and triple pandemic and quadruple pandemic, that is one thing that we can learn is the importance of knowing when to stand and knowing when to work. 
You cannot do it all by yourself. You are not called to show up to everything. You are not called to be everything for everybody. Sometimes the best thing that you can do is decide, yes, I will step into a moment that I don't quite understand and being there is enough. Need to just be there as an observer. That is what we can learn from the elders. Step in stand and finally we can learn to watch the elders had to watch as generation and generation crossed in front of them not knowing when or if they would get their opportunity to step into the new territory that the people were about to possess and still they stood there and they watched they stood there and they watched and they had to trust that the God who brought them to the water would be the same God that would carry them through the water. The God who had caused the water to dry up so that dry ground could come forth is the same God that would allow them to go in and be a part of the land, to be a part of this newness that the community was experiencing. It is a radical trust, it is a radical faith, and that is a lesson that we can learn that there is beauty that comes from stepping in the water so that they see the dry ground dry up. There's beauty that comes from standing. There's beauty that comes from watching. And when we do that, when we do that, we can see how things can be done. We give people, other people, the opportunity to step in. We give other people the opportunity to experience newness, and then we can come along and experience it as well. Today, as we think about All Saints Day, as we think about those who have come before us, those who may no longer be here, as we think about our grandparents and maybe uh, our parents or uh, cousins or friends or aunts or uncles who have made their transition, the question is how can we look at the lives that they've lived and learn something of importance for our own lives? That is actually what this text teaches us, that there are things that we can glean from the generations who have come before us if we learn to stand and watch more than we try to control or talk or do. I recall a story that I have told before of my grandfather's transition. When my grandfather was dying back November of 2016, November the 12th, 2016 and we were in the hospital with my grandfather and while we were there uh, my grandfather was going in and out of consciousness but there was a moment where he began to give instructions I don't know where it came from but he was instructing my father my aunt and myself on how to build a staircase he called on my dad he told my dad uh, grab the nail grab the hammer and he was telling my dad exactly what he wanted him to do to build the staircase and my dad tried time after time and he was doing okay at first grandfather said take the nail and hit the nail and next step and he kept giving these instructions and after a while my dad didn't quite do it the way that my grandfather desired and so he told my dad to give the hammer to my aunt it went on to my auntie and she did okay for a little bit. She actually got a little further than my dad did, but somewhere along the line, she did not quite hit the nail the way my grandfather had instructed. So he said, pass it on to Dustin. And after I watched and observed how my father hit this imaginative nail with the hammer, with the imaginative hammer, after I watched how my aunt did it, I was able to see where they messed up. And so I used that as a learning moment, as a lesson to know what I needed to do to get my grandfather's approval. And I'm happy to report that I was able to finish the staircase as I built and listen and watch and observe step after step and hit after hit. In this imaginative moment, I did not quite understand what was happening. But after my grandfather had made his final transition, I understood that my grandfather was teaching me an important lesson. And that lesson was to listen to instructions, 
to observe what was happening before me so that I knew how to continue progressing forward. That is what we can learn today on All Saints Sunday. That is what we can glean from those who come before us. The importance of listening, of observing. It doesn't mean we have to do everything the same way that they did it, but it at the very least means that we can learn from mistakes before us, we can learn from patterns before us, we can learn from history before us, and we can decide to move forward in a way that will make our world better. That is what I challenge you to do this week. This week we have uh, pressing moments ahead of us. We have an election coming up. I want to know how can you look at what has happened uh, this year over the course of the past couple of years, are there things that we can look to, that we can observe, that we can take lessons and learn how to move forward in a way that is more just, that is more righteous, that allows for more people to be successful? Can we find a way to glean from both the success and the mistakes of those who have gone before us and figure out how we will chart new territory so that life as we know it will be better. That is the hope. And I pray that each of you learn how to sit in that this week. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for this worship service. I am so grateful that you are here. Listen, I challenge you this week to find a way to connect with those who have come before you those who have transitioned on, those who may not be on this side anymore. Find a way that you can learn about their stories, about their histories, and figure out how you can choose to live a life of purpose. Take what they did a step further and be better. Not saying that they're not great people, but figure out how you can take their lives and be better, not just for yourself, but for the community around you. That is my challenge to you for this week. And I also challenge you to find a way to unplug and find some rest. This will probably be a rough week for many of us. And I want to name that, that this week will probably present some challenges that we'll have to face, that we'll have to learn to grow from. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to go easy on yourself to be gracious with yourself, to be patient with yourself as you navigate this week. If you are in need of a listening ear, if you want someone to reach out to, please do so by reaching out to me at dpicket1 at udayton.edu, or you can send an email to udim at udayton.edu. Please reach out. You are not alone. You are not on this journey by yourselves. Well, thanks again for listening. Shoot me an email. Let me know that you're doing okay. Drop a comment in the chat box. And we'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place, worshiping the same God. Now receive this benediction. Now may the mountains rise in praise. May the valleys bow in worship. May the rivers overflow with exceeding joy. May the trees sway in adoration. And may you, the children of God, always be reminded of your call to watch, to stand, to observe, and to live a better life from what you see. Until next time, go in peace. Amen.